you all and welcome to my channel. It's your brother, Chief Lamashe Wiyapal Sewulana. Okay. Hello, family. Greetings to you all and welcome back to my channel. It's your brother, Chief Lamashe Wiyapal Sewulana, sending my peaceful and lovely greetings to you all from Tamale, the capital city of Northern Ghana. How are you doing and how is our families at your side doing? How is everyone at your side doing? Okay, so welcome back to the chats. Tonight is a... Yeah, so... Um, tonight is a conversation of so many informations. When I say so many informations, I'm talking about you know, genuine informations and, you know, informations that will help you, especially to some of you who are Ghanaians and wants to build your houses in Ghana and to some of you who are, you know, foreigners. Sorry to use that word. I don't like using the word foreigners, but it is what it is. So to those of you who are foreigners and wants to build your house in Ghana, and as well as, you know, Ghanaians living in Ghana or abroad who wants to build their houses in Ghana. These are the important tips and informations that I'm going to share with you tonight. But before I continue with this uh, important conversation, I'm going to once again send my warmly and lovely greetings to you all from my palace, my beautiful palace. You can see the natural plants here. So all of these plants that I have on my background are natural plants that I planted, you know, from the uh, forecourt of my palace. So um, I'm gonna share with you these important tips about how to build your houses in Ghana. And I'm gonna also share with you these important tips, a very, very important tips about how to own lands in Ghana to build your houses, how to own lands in Ghana to build your houses, and how to construct your house. So I have to make a part two of this video because my time is very, very limited. I was supposed to come live at around uh, 9.20 p.m., but for the fact that I've been busy and doing so many things, I wasn't able to get time to come out and do all of this but before i continue with this conversation at least i as you already know how i do things i don't just do things like anyhow i have to first of all praise the ancestors before we get into job and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click on the notifications bell or just give my videos a thumbs up whenever i post a video and you know when you uh, subscribe to my channel click on the notifications bell so that you get you know notified with all kind of videos that i'll share with you and don't forget you know to share these contents with your families and friends as well as you know just go ahead and do whatever you want to do as well as you know uh, as long as my videos is, is involved so i'm gonna give thanks and praises to the ancestors before we continue with this video that's what i always do my volume is low, so I have to raise my volume. Sanka, Sanka, no, you're a bullet. 
That's a tradition. This is the typical tradition of Dagbon. This is the typical tradition of Dagbon Kingdom. This drumming and dancing that I'm just sharing with you is not just drumming and dancing, but it consists a lot of, you know, it consists with a lot of oral history about our ancestors. So when I hear that all the time, not me alone, any typical person from Northern Ghana from the Dagbon Kingdom, who hears this? From the Mamprusi Kingdom, who hears this? From the Nanumba Kingdom, who hears this? From the Mosi Kingdom, even it stretches to Burkina Faso, who hears this history? All the tribes in Northern Ghana, when they hear this history, it goes into their bones, like it goes. People who can hear and understand it, when they hear it, it goes straight up into their bones, and it makes them to dance. It makes them to dance because they are hearing the words of the ancestors. The, 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 you know, the, the, the healing of the ancestors, as well as, you know, what has to keep them, you know, proud of who they are, as well as, you know, what has to motivate them when they think like they are falling, like what can uplift them. This is why we have these oral historians. But tonight is not a night for oral history. I'm gonna. Do you want me to actually get a time for these oral histories with with these dramas? Let me know if you wanna uh, if you want us to do that, so I can schedule some time within the week. 
though I'm a very, very busy person. I'm a very, very, very busy man. Very busy. But I'm going to get some time to do that. Hopefully, hopefully, like, maybe like Saturdays. Saturdays, for instance, is a little bit kind of... Um, I don't have a, I don't actually have days that I'm not busy. I'm always busy. 24-7, I'm always busy. Because you know what? The little knowledge and the little wisdom that I have, I share it all the time. So I have so many responsibilities. Responsibility of my chieftaincy title, responsibilities of my building projects, responsibilities of my, my welding job, responsibilities of so many things, family responsibilities, community responsibilities, and any kind of, now, there's a whole bunch of responsibilities that I do. But you know what? Upon all that, there is some things, you know, there's some feelings that we have when we hear these oral histories that makes us feel like we should share. You know, it doesn't belong to all of us alone. It doesn't belong to we here in Northern Ghana alone. Because this oral history that I always dance, that you look at on my videos or that you watch on my videos, it is only the, the, the kingdom of Northern Ghana in the, uh, in the entire country of Ghana, it is only in Northern Ghana that has these oral historians we call the drums of Dagbom, the drums of Dagbom. When you trace into my YouTube channel, you will see what I'm talking about. Or just go and search uh, on YouTube, Dagbom 1982, Dagbom 1982. So the Dagbom is spelled as D. A G B O N Dagbon Kingdom or just Dagbon 1982. You will see and you will learn a lot of promise and oral history that has to relate with we, the kings and the chiefs. You understand? But then this is not the topic for tonight. I'm gonna come straight forward for us to start the conversation about the topic for tonight. Because <laughs> I'm a work, I'm a walking encyclopedia. I'm a walking encyclopedia and when I'm going to share with you things it will take us for the rest of the night for me to share and not even enough, just a little bit of what I can share. But then I don't want to make shortcuts of things. When I'm going to teach you something, at least even when it's going to be shortcut, it should have a reasonable way of doing it so that you get a, a better understanding to what I'm saying. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm not just a talkative who just come and uh, be here on YouTube and just talk to you just because I want you to be happy or I want you to, to, to just have a good time. Though I want you to be happy and have a good time, but I also want you to be happy and have a good time and also learn some great information, like some great content from me. You understand? I'm not just these YouTubers who build houses without even knowing what they are doing. I'm not that kind of those uh, people. Talking about measurements, I know measurements. Starting from inches, starting from three quarter, starting from half inch, and starting from one foot upwards. Starting from millimeters and whatever, diameters and whatever. I know measurements, you understand? I know measurements. I'm a, I'm a craftsman. I'm a craftsman myself. I've been into welding and fabrication job for the, the past 26 years. So talking about measurements and plans with regards to building and construction, it's on my head and it's not on the book. You understand? And I don't search on YouTube or I don't search on Pinterest or I don't search on any kind of, you know, uh, site to get these information. I already have what I know on my mind, talking about building, you understand? And talking about, you know, how to construct a land. And we, when we talk about lands, I also grew up at a palace. My father was a king, my mother was a queen mother, and I was born as a prince and now a chief. So talking about you know how we own lands in Ghana, nothing escapes my mind about that. So I'm gonna start with you about how to own land in Ghana. So this is the topic, how to own land in Ghana and how to build your house. This is the topic that I'm just gonna bring you, you know, teach you a little bit tonight so you can understand perfectly what I mean or what I'm trying to teach you. So first of all, let's come to land ownership. The meaning, the real meaning of land ownership. You understand? 
Land ownership in Ghana is known as land tenor system. Land tenor system. So this land tenor system, when you turn it, or when you want to know the meaning of land tenor system, it simply means the ownership of land. Land tenor system means the ownership of land. So uh, my brothers and sisters, before I continue with this conversation, I want to just quickly come to the chat and give a shout out to my sister. Um, love to travel with Wave. Greetings to you, my sister. You were here sometime last year, this month. I remember the good times we had here with you. My sister loved to travel with Wave, Brother Van, Brother Eddie, and of course, my sister, uh, Sister Eddie Fruz. Uh, sister Eddie Fruz's mom passed away just yesterday. I pray that our grandmom will have an eternal, uh, an eternal rest. May her soul rest in perfect peace. And I pray that our ancestors will welcome her with you know, peace, love, and harmony, with smiles and joy. And I pray that our ancestor, you know, will have a good transition. I'm mourning with you, mom. Yeah, I mean, I was supposed to do a video today with, you know, some good information about building this afternoon. But the problem is I still have that in mind. I'm still having the demise of our late grandmother in mind. That is uh, Sister Edith Rose's mom. I wouldn't call her uh, Sister Edith Rose's mom, but our mother, our grandmother. So she's a mom to Mama Edith Rose and then a grandmother to us. May her soul rest in perfect peace. And um, I'm sending my sincere condolences to you, my Mama Edith Rose, and the family at large. Yeah. They are blessed because they've gotten what they want. Yeah, so uh, when I'm going to come into the chat, I will say uh, a very big thank you and a very big, you know, appreciation and respectful love and blessed love to my sister, uh, Ojwini Ogari Lakwa. Blessed love to you, my sister. My Ugandan sister, blessed love to you. I appreciate you so much. And I love you, my sister. So please be greetings to you, my either my brother or sister. I don't know if you are a female or you are a male, but blessed love to you, whatever you catching up with me. Big up to you and blessed love to you and your families. Uh, there's this brother, King Genocide. King Genocide, blessed love to you and welcome to the chat. Uh, Plum Jade, blessed love to you and welcome to the chat. You've been a very supportive uh, member of this channel and I appreciate you so much and so many people who are either supportive or not supportive I appreciate you all for your efforts I appreciate you 100% for your efforts and um, yeah so I'm gonna come to business so talking about how to own lands in Ghana talking about how to really own lands to build in Ghana when we are talking about how you can own your, like how you can use your money to buy land and own the land in Ghana without interruption, without any difficulties, without problems. There are so many channels that you can pass to be the rightful owner of a land in Ghana. But there's one original channel that you can pass through to get it. But sometimes that channel has problems. Sometimes that channel has problems. And this channel, that is the original way of acquiring a land in Ghana. You know, when you are not a Ghanaian, or even when you are a Ghanaian and you don't know how it works, that's how you end up losing your land, even though you use your money to buy the land. And that is from the chiefs and the kings. Sometimes it saddens my heart and it pains me when I say this. But, you know... Just like this, our fingers, you can see our fingers. These are our five fingers. All of these five fingers is not the same. This is the biggest finger, but it's the shortest among all the five. So that is like about we humans. Sometimes you see a human being, you trust them, you know that they are genuine, but in the end, they are fake. You understand? Because imagine one chief or one elder selling land to like three or four people. But thank God it is not happening here like that. 
it is not happening here, happening here like it happens in the southern part of Ghana, like somewhere around uh, uh, Ashanti region and somewhere around Greater Accra region. It doesn't happen like that. And, and in some parts of Eastern region as well, Eastern region in Ghana as well. In the northern part of Ghana, it's, it's, we don't have that much problems with you know lands. And sorry to say, my brothers and sisters, it is not that I'm trying to disrespect the land tenorship over there with regards to my grandfathers over there and with regards to my fathers over there. I'm talking about the kings and the chiefs. But the whole thing is that traditionally, according to the Ghanaian culture of living or according to the Ghanaian rightful way of owning a land, the rightful owners of the Ghanaian lands, the Ghanaian lands belongs to two, you know, royal royalties in Ghana. We have stool lands and we have skin lands. We have stool uh, lands. The stool lands that I'm talking about right now is people from the south. You know, they are kings and their chiefs. They sit on stool. So that's why we call it stool lands. Stool lands. They use this wood to make a stool for their kings to sit. And here in the northern part of Ghana, we are having something we call skin lands. Skin lands. This skin lands is because our chiefs and our, our kings are sitting on animal skins. Animals such as lions, animals such as tigers, animals such as um, buffaloes. And just, you know, the most wildest animal you could ever know. Our kings sit on those animals because, you know, it, it traces back into history. Way back in history, our elders, our kings, our ancestors, our chiefs, they were very brave warriors. Even our ancestor, the original ancestor of these kingdoms in northern Ghana was a very brave warrior. And that was in the person of Tuaje, the Red Hunter. Tuaje in Dagbanle our language, in, when you translate it into English, it means the red hunter. So, and therefore, this is what I want to educate people for them to understand about what I'm really going to teach you tonight. I'm not going to have the time to teach you all, but I'm going to take you through a process so that you, you get to know what I'm really teaching you. So, these two lands and the skin lands, they are the rightful owner of the land in, of the lands in Ghana, they are the rightful owners, like traditionally, and even in accordance with the law, it's in the 1992 constitution. I don't know which section it, it is, but I'm going to take you through traditionally, both, both in the constitution, in the law, and both in, in, in tradition. The land tenor system in Ghana belongs to the kings and the chiefs. Okay, that, so that's number one. Government has also got lands. Real estate developers has also got lands, as well as ordinary people has got lands. So when you are going to buy land to build your house, first of all, make a very, very serious investigation as to where you are buying the land. And it's not difficult in doing this. The government agencies that, you know, demarcate our lands is called the Department of Town and Country Planning. That's the name, the Department of Town and Country Planning. But, you know, when you buy your land, uh, before you take it to the town, Department of Town and Country Planning, this particular place that I'm talking about, this particular uh, government institution or agency that I'm talking about, they are the first people to start your, 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 your I mean, your, your, the process of your documents or the documentation of your land. The Department of Town and Country Planning is the first place that you go to get, you know, a document to start the official government documentation of your land. So when you take your papers, the papers of your land that you bought, from anyone it could be from the chief's palace it could be from the chief king's palace so the king and the chief's palace is the same because they are the owners of the land and then when you are uh, quite apart from the chiefs and the kings when you buy your land from uh, either an individual either an organization 
or either a businessman or either a real estate developer or whatever, if you are going to do the right information, like if you are going to do the right full way of the change of ownership, they have to take you through from the traditional level, that is from the chief's palace or the king's palace, meaning the king or the chief that owns the land that you buy. They have to take you there for them to make a document for you and to approve it and get it into their system. Then from there, you take their papers to the Department of Town and Country Planning. That is where when you go, they will show you the site plan of your land. They will show you where your land is. You understand what I mean? This is very concrete information that I'm sharing with you about ownership of land in Ghana, everywhere in Ghana. So after you buy your land, when the person who sold the land to you or when the business, you know, uh, um, that, you know, when the, when the business group or when the real estate uh, developer or who, whoever sold the land to you, when they take you to the traditional level, like to, to start your documentation, from there, it is where the secretary to the king or the chief will change the name of the document to the first owner of the land, the one who sold it to you, and use you, the second party who bought the land, fix your name into the document, cancel the name of the past owner who sold it to you, and then right from there, they will sign. We have, you know, in, in every kingdom in Ghana, we have divisional kings, we have paramount kings, and we have sub-chiefs, you understand? So all of these people has to sign. All of these people has to sign. So mostly it is the, the community that you bought the land and then the divisional king. So when it goes upwards, I'm going to explain that in the next, you know, part of our conversation for tonight or my conversation for tonight. So when you change your name at the chief's palace and then you take your document to the Department of Town and Country Planning, they will show you a site plan to your land. They will show you in, a, in, the, in their system from their computer. And then they will show you that this is where your land is. So if there is anyone vacant on that, on that land already, that is where you will know that they have, fake some, uh, they, have, they have sold some fake land to you. Because when you go to change your name there, it cannot be changed there. When you go and the land is free, if it is the person who sold it for you, whose name is on that system, then they will understand and they will change it. But sometimes, you know, someone, someone will just have lands without registering it at the town and country, uh, and country planning, you know, department. So with things like this, it's a little bit easier. Because, you know, they would show you that, okay, this is the land. No one is occupying the land. It's for you. As long as the person sold it to you and you come with the right documents, they already have, you know, site plans on all those areas in Ghana where you own your land. They work hand in hand with the chiefs and the kings. So they work together with the chiefs and the kings. So when you take your land's documents to them, it's much easier. It's pretty much easier for them to understand that while well, there is someone on that land or there is no one on that land. Like I'm talking about the ownership of the land. So when you take that from the lands department, then you now take your site plan to the survey department. When you take it to the survey department, they will also take the document from the Department of Town and Countries uh, and Country Planning. And they will now, you know, start to register you in their system. And by so doing, they will have to let someone follow you. They will have to pick up someone from their department to follow you to the land to see if there's really a, I mean, a settlement on the land or not. And if there is not settlement on the land and the land is free, the land is bare, like no housing on the land, no any settlement on the land is free, then they will come back and start their process. So right from there, when they start their process and finish it, 
then you take the Department of Town and Country Planning's document together with the survey department, you know, document, and then take it to the Department of Lands. So that is where you get your cadastral. That is where you get what we call the 99-year lease. With this 99-year lease that you get, it will tell you that you will, you will be on the, la on the land for 99 years. There's a hidden secret about that 99 years, but I'm not going to share it right now on my channel. You understand? It's a process. I'm going to teach you everything. So whilst you are going through all this process, you can start to build your house. What do you think about that? This is the information you have to know. <laughs> this is the right information you have to know when you are building in Ghana as a foreigner, as a Ghanaian, or any person who wants to build and, you know, live in Ghana. These are the information that you have to know. But then sometimes when you are a foreigner, um, you know, you have to have some resident permit or sometimes it, the resident permit doesn't really matter, but it matters sometimes. And it also depends on people that you meet. You understand? But for the fact that, you know, Ghana was declared freedom from the past, freedom and justice. We believe in the freedom and we don't believe in the justice. The freedom is working 100%. But the justice part of the of the you know movement is not all that working. <laughs> so this is what I always believe. I've known a lot of foreigners that I've helped, you know, to own lands. The only people that I don't, you know, uh, or that have uh, that have uh, that have stopped to help are troublesome foreigners. Because I'm a very peaceful man. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very, very peaceful man. I'm a very free man. I love peace. I love peace and I want everyone to be peaceful. You understand? Even though that's how I live my life. But everyone has got how they live their life. So and therefore, when you approach me to buy land from me, I have to have some much information about you before I sell lands to you. Because selling lands to someone that you don't know much about is just like selling yourself to the person. Like me, as an example, as a chief, when I sell land to someone that I don't know much information about, it's like selling my own self to the person, but not the land. Because once I sell the land to the person, I sell it out. There's no way that I'll say it belongs to me again. I'm very real and genuine. You understand? When I sell something like lands, I don't wash my back to look at it again because I've sold it out. So what do I want to get again? I took, I sold it out. I took the money. You understand? So I don't need anything from that again, especially that land. But then I'm not here on this particular conversation because I want to really, you know, uh, kind of sell lands to people. I'm not here to sell lands to people, but I'm here to educate you about how to own lands and not how I have to sell. I still have a whole bunch of lands, but I don't sell it. Like, I, I don't just sell it anyhow. You understand? I don't just sell it anyhow. Everything, you know, happens for a reason in life. And again, our ancestors were, was, were very, very proud ancestors that has, you know, you know, kind of kept, fought and kept these lands for, for us that we inherited, that we live in on, that we are proud about and proud about them, our ancestors. So, and therefore, um, in the Bible, we have something we call carry, carry. It's like when something is happening in your life and you know, I can use my mouth to say this and this will happen because I'm right, you understand? It's like incantations, like when you use your mouth to talk to your ancestors, they, they easily listen to you. You understand? It's like um, just going on with the truth. You understand? So that's why I said for, I said for me as a, as a chief and for me as a prince, even the days that I was a prince and still a prince and a chief, now I'm holding two titles, a chief and a prince. <laughs> 
So that is what I'm saying. So um, I'm going to come out with some more information about this. I really wish I have much time to share with you about, you know, how to own this lands and how to start your building right from the foundation. Talking about the measurements of your foundation, talking about the measurements of your uh, your, 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 your pillar columns, talking about the measurements of your pillar beams, talking about the measurements of your bricks. Either you are building with a concrete brick or just pure mud, mud bricks and just, or not even bricks, just using the natural soil to build and how you have to roof it with either the natural uh, touch grasses or, or, or kind of roof it metal or uh, galvanized or aluminum uh, roofing sheets and, and whatever. Even with the building plans, you understand? Everything is here. <laughs> Everything is here. Yeah, everything is here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to find some time to make a part two of this video. Hopefully, to those of you who wants to learn and know so much, today tomorrow is what? Tuesday. So I lost my auntie some three days ago. So tomorrow being Tuesday will be the fourth day. So tomorrow I'm going to have rural and I'll be back a little bit late. But I'll still see what I can do. So when I come back, whoever wants to know exactly what it is about this building practices and the plans, you can still watch me or just come to my channel and I'll be live at around 10 o'clock or 10.30 p.m. So I'll be, alive, I'll be live on my channel at around 10.30 p.m. to share with you the rest of the information. You understand? Uh, brother Winston Gel TV, bless and love to you. Winston Gel TV is a Jamaican brother. He has a whole lot of information to share. He also in, he's also into construction uh, business and he's doing well. I love his videos. I learn so much from his videos. So to those of you who just don't want to just watch people using their mouth to talk on YouTube about their building plans without showing the reality, like I do. You understand For me i show my contents from scratch to the end for for you just to see whatever is going on so if you want to get the right information you can also go to him and watch his channel he's very positive and he is showing a lot even me myself as a as a master in building <laughs> as a professional builder I learned something from him because it is said that we have a Dagbanli proverb that says that yam yani you know malbo yam yani you know malbo. This was a proverb chosen by Tolenayaku, my grandfather, Tolenayaku, my grandfather from my maternal lineage at Tolong. He was the king at Tolong in the late, you know, forties and fifties. So he's one of those who fought for Ghana's independence, Tolenaya Kuptale. He was very brave and very, very knowledgeable and intelligent. Tolenaya was my grandfather. He said, knowledge is so much for one person to bear. Knowledge is so much for one person to have on their head. Wisdom is so much for one person to have on their head. So that was his appellation. That was the appellation he chose for himself even before he became a politician or not just a politician, but an educationist. You understand? Tolenaya Kuptale is one of, those, one of the first educationists in Northern Ghana. Very, very intelligent. And that was during the days of Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Ghana's first president. So... When you go to that video that I'm talking about, right from around the first minute of the video to somewhere around the 20th minute, you will see him there, Tolenaya Kub, you will see him and his elders and his palace and the village. It's called Dagbon 1982. That was very, that was even the years that we were born. So family, this is the information that I'm going to share with you. Um... Sister Brenetta Krigley, Blade said love to you, my sister. I really miss you. It's been a long time. How are you doing? 
Uh, so, all right, so family, this is where I'm going to end this video. I'm sorry, this is getting so interesting. And I should have continued the video, you know, for you to have all the information. But the, the information is long. And I don't do things so long because I have so much responsibilities, like I always tell you. So I'm going to continue with this, our ancestors' history for a little bit. Then we can continue.